Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome back to episode number 171 of the Healthy Skin Show. Today's episode is a really fascinating conversation and one that I've been super excited to share with you guys. So some time ago, I started to become aware that dental work can play a role not just on your health, but also in your skin. Now, I personally have not experienced a whole lot of dental issues in my life, and that's probably why this particular issue or concern was not necessarily at the top of my own personal radar. But as I dove deeper into the connections between hidden infections and where they can lurk in your mouth and how that can then impact your GI tract as well as your skin and your overall sense of well-being. It's my hope that by diving into this particular conversation that you too will also begin to see that there are other important facets to your teeth outside of mercury fillings, right? We focus a lot when we say dental work in the more integrative space, people focus on the fact that they may be exposed to mercury because of certain fillings that you may have. However, this conversation will highlight for you why that is just one concern. And if anything, we need to pay attention and consider root canals as another possible red flag for what may underlie and drive problems in the body, especially those that are driven by inflammation, right? Inflammation that is generated someplace else and then can wreak havoc in all these different areas. My guest today is Dr. Kelly J. Blodgett. He is a recognized leader in holistic and integrative biological dentistry, a published researcher, author, and top clinician. His educational background in psychology, traditional dentistry, naturopathic medicine dentistry, and integrative biological dental medicine provides him with a unique perspective as a healthcare provider. He understands and respects the interconnectedness of oral health, systemic health, and the feelings and emotions which accompany most people's dental experience. Dr. Blodgett's professional vision is to reverse the negative stereotype associated with dentistry by sharing loving care in an environment free from judgment. So without further ado, let's dive into today's conversation. Thanks so much for joining us, Dr. Blodgett. I really appreciate you being on the show. Thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to be with you today. This is awesome. I am honestly probably even more thrilled than you are because, <laughs> and you guys have to know this, the reason that I invited Dr. Blodgett on, the, on this podcast is because I happened to come across some very eye-opening images on Instagram. and. Um, he shares some information about dentistry and how what we're potentially doing in dentistry now, like conventional dentistry, could be part of this whole root cause system that we need to consider in the process of figuring out what is causing issues under the surface. And so um, today I wanted to share with you guys his thoughts and experiences, like real life experiences in practice of some of the problems that root canals can cause. And I thought before that a root canal is just a root canal. Well, it's not. And so, um, Dr. Blagett, would you kind of help frame this conversation of like, why right now, why do people end up getting root canals? Um, and, and what exactly is just like the basic process, especially for those of us like myself who've never had one? Sure, sure. So, I mean, if I, if I roll back, you know, to my days in dental school, you know, more than 20 years ago, I have to get into that mindset, right? Um, <laughs> you know, the, the, the thought process is this, is that, you know, let's say a tooth is either so infected that, you know, the bacteria have made their way in, like through the hard parts of the tooth, the hard structures and into the nerve portion 
where you have uh, nerves and blood flow and all that into the center of the tooth. And we call that the pulp chamber. Um, so if that gets infected or let's say somebody goes in to have some dental work done and, you know, the dentist is kind of rough with the tooth and perhaps they don't uh, treat the tooth very kindly and it's sensitive afterwards, which is very common. Um, let's say they go back to the dentist and they say, oh, geez, you did this filling and it's sensitive. Well, then they say, well, it's probably, you know, super inflamed inside and, you know, you quote unquote, you need a root canal, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So that's what people hear a lot. Or, or it could be that the nerve inside the tooth simply died. Maybe it experienced some trauma, you know, um, for any number of reasons, right? Something went wrong inside the tooth. And so the dentist tells you, you need a root canal, um, which I could go on for, you know, probably an hour talking about the, the problems I have with that statement. Um, but the process when they do a root canal is drill a hole into the center of the tooth, remove all of the pulp material, or if it's all dissolved away because it died, uh, they would attempt to remove whatever gunk was inside, which is usually turned to pus. Um, oh. And they do their best to clean out that space and dry it out and then fill that long skinny canal system with root canal filling materials. Um, so that's what a root canal process uh, is about. Okay. And this can go awry. And there are some reasons why. <laughs> right. And for those of you listening to this, if you, like me, need to see a photo, don't worry, I have you covered. Uh, we're going to share at least one image uh, that Dr. Bloodjet has shared on Instagram. We're going to share those within the body of this post associated with this episode because I think sometimes it's nice to talk about things, but when you really see how it shows up in real life, that can be even more shocking. So what happens to that person then? So you removed this pussy, gunky tissue. You right. have a root canal. And yet maybe you're having other health issues. Like maybe, for example, somebody is having chronic atopic dermatitis or psoriasis or some other skin issue, or it could be any other number of conditions. Uh, like this is not specific to skin. This can show up in many other different ways, right? Oh, absolutely. So what, what can go wrong that you end up seeing in your practice? Yeah, sure. And, and I, I think I'll, if I may, I'll offer a little bit of the, the anatomy of why things go wrong, first, of, first and foremost. Please. So um, let's, let's first talk about the infectious issue, right? So the problem with that whole root canal protocol is that um, if, if your root was a solid mass that was non-porous, then the idea of a root canal could potentially work pretty well. But the problem is, is that the entire dentin material, which is like 80% of your tooth, is porous like a sponge. And bacteria, once, once your immune system is gone from that tooth because you've drilled out uh, your lymphatic drainage and, and blood, fresh blood supply, the bacteria have no problem climbing inside that tooth. And that was probably the biggest aha that I had uh, after 15 years of extracting teeth and doing root canals was I was taking out all these teeth and, and you could see that the inside of the tooth had become black. But having uh, performed many root canals, I knew that, geez, when we're finished doing the root canal, there's nothing dark inside. How does it get dark, right? Um, mm. So there's this whole infectious aspect to root canal treated teeth. And, um, you know, I, I send, I've sent probably a couple of hundred teeth to a DNA lab over the last three to four years. Every single one I have sent has come back teeming with bacteria, viruses, uh, fungi and parasites. So oh it's not like, well, every once in a while you see some stuff in there. It's every one that I've sent so far has been teeming with this stuff. So the infectious part is one big aspect. The second issue is energetically, each tooth is connected to an energetic meridian. So I'll give you a, for instance, say your upper first molar, for instance, on both sides happens to be connected to your thyroid gland. So you think about how many people do you talk to in your health practice who are dealing with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, something of that nature, right? And, and the problem is people want to look at, well, 
let's look at your, you know, um, thyroid hormones and all this. And, that. and that's great. Like, yeah, absolutely. That's part of the differential diagnosis. Um, but at what point do people ask, have you had any uh, dental therapy? Because it doesn't have to be root canals. It could be, you know, energetically conductive fillings. Um, it could be uh, gum inflammation around those teeth. Anything that disturbs the energetic balance, right? So it's both infection and energetic imbalance that can throw things off on any organ or system within the body. Uh, and nobody's asking about what's going on with people's dental health. Yeah, no, it's not a question that actually any doctor I can think of has ever asked me, to right. be honest with you. <laughs> sure, and we're, and we're not taught to, right? I mean, we're taught that if you think about it, even one more step back, isn't it odd that, you know, we've got medical school and, and from medical school, come all of your specialists, like your podiatrist and, mm -hmm. you know, your ophthalmologist and, um, you know, your gastrointestinal, uh, and, uh, your GI health doc. I mean, all these things, but dentistry is a separate thing. It's kind of interesting, right? It's literally divorced from medicine, both from an educational standpoint and a practical functional standpoint. Um, and, and unfortunately the patients are the ones who pay the price because, you know, things are being done. We're talking about root canals today, right? Somewhere between 15 and 20 million root canals will get done in, in the United States this year. Um, that's a lot of environment created that will breed uh, infection in people's jaw bones, which is going to infect their entire health. And, and unfortunately, nobody's asking about that as they're assessing um, why are they experiencing different health symptoms. Um, and, and if we're not looking at it, you know, of course, it's very hard to get to the, pardon the pun, but the root cause, uh, if we're not asking about their oral health, because it's, it's absolutely related and connected. And let's talk about that for a moment. So we've just been talking about a root canal. So when I think of that, I'm just thinking the tooth, but you just mentioned the bone, the tissue right. deeper than the tooth. So how... So, so let's pretend here, so like, let's pretend I have a root canal and the tooth is loaded with black pus, all sorts of gross right. bacteria, fungi, et cetera. Yep. How could that then impact the tissue deeper in my mouth? Yeah. So, you know, it's interesting that tooth becomes a foreign body once it's um, disconnected from your blood supply and your nerves. I mean, you do have around the periphery, you know, a ligament attachment, um, which slowly breaks down and the bone around that uh, dead tooth tends to harden over time. So there are physiologic changes that occur uh, as a result of having a dead tooth organ in your jawbone. And of course, we would expect this, right? If you had a you know, let's say you got a big shiv stuck in your, your hand or something, you would expect for those tissues to change. They become inflamed. Um, you might notice some pus draining around it if you, you know, if you chose to, to leave it in there, sure. which of course wouldn't be good. But of course, we should expect the gum tissue around a dead tooth to look more inflamed. We should expect the bone to start showing changes over time um, because it's completely dissimilar from its native state now once it's dead. Um, and, and usually what I observe, because, you know, the biggest part of my, my, uh, holistic dental practice now is removing infection from people's jaws, mostly either cavitation lesions or, uh, root canals. And we tend to see bone, the initial bone around these teeth will have a very dead quality to it. Um, and, and you have to remove that stuff. People talk a lot about if you, if you, read on uh, social media or you're doing web searches like the idea of when a tooth comes out, do they take out the periodontal ligament, right? And, and of course, that's, that's part of the process. But also that dense, um, like artificially dense, what we call the lamina dura, it's this dense bone around teeth. If you don't remove that, um, because it's all mineralized, right? There's no vascular flow into that the body's going to have a very hard time healing that. So you, know, you really have to, as a clinician, you know, we pay close attention to what is the bone telling us, so to speak, 
uh, as we're cleaning that stuff out and uh, helping their body get to a state of healing. And I imagine, too, having a tooth, a dead tooth, Mm -hmm. hanging out there with all of those bugs, we'll just call them bugs for the sake of this conversation, that should not be there. Right. You know, I try to remind people that there is a microbiome in your mouth that is different than what you have on your skin, what you have in your gut. But every time you swallow, you are swallowing that microbiome, you're swallowing those bugs into your GI system. And if God forbid, you also have H. pylori or low stomach acid, which is incredibly common in the population that I see in my practice of people who have these chronic skin issues. And it could be because of a nutrient depletion like zinc, it could be chronic stress, but H. pylori is another factor in all of this. You no longer have a chemical barrier to kill these bugs. And so it gives them access to your GI tract. So there's that one piece to it, but like having an infected bone, Mm -hmm. how does that, does it access, is it possible that those organisms get access to your system in, in like through the blood supply or how does that impact the body? Yeah, absolutely. And and this is, you know, nothing new. Uh, I find it very interesting that Uh, You know, you look back into the 1970s even, and there's so much scientific evidence around gum disease and, 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 you know, this acknowledgement that, well, if you've got a a microbiome, essentially, you know, periodontal microbiome that's out of balance and it drives a person towards gum disease, um, you know, that puts them at risk for, and you start just listing things off, right? Heart disease, diabetes, um, Mm -hmm. Alzheimer's, like yada, yada. So why is that not true also for dead teeth that are leaching bacteria or bugs for, you know, for simplicity into the same cardiovascular supply chain, right? Um, And it's interesting because when you look at science, which I have, you know, I've gone on PubMed and done done some PubMed diving, uh, there's just no, there aren't any studies being done about it, uh, which I find questionable. Um, but given what I have seen and what I've tested myself sending to DNA labs for analyses, um, I can only as a science, scientifically minded person come to the same conclusion that it's the same lymph drainage. It's the same cardiovascular supply that's supplying the bone around these dead teeth. Of course, that stuff is getting into your body. Um, and we should expect similar systemic effects that is a little scary to think like you just have this constant pocket of oh goodness unfriendly an unfriendly community just hanging out kind of stewing in your system so for for people who are listening to this because i'm i'm imagining if i was someone who's had a root canal right now I might be feeling a little stressed, a little freaking out at the moment, Mm. you know, like, oh my gosh, my mouth. So, all right. If you've had a root canal, does it mean that every person who's had one, I mean, I know you said every tooth that you've removed has this bacteria when you sent it off to a lab or these different organisms. Do you feel that someone who has had root canals and maybe multiples should consider like, what should they consider doing if they're listening to this and they're like, oh, my goodness, right? what do I do? Well, as I'm sure that, you know, I would imagine we are of the same mindset that healthcare is completely, in, you know, in my opinion, it should be individualized, right? So just, just because one, you know, person A has a root canal in their upper right canine and person B has a root canal in the same canine, does that mean that their bodies are going to experience the exact same scenarios of, of health shifts or energetic change? Well, we really don't know because they're two different people, right? Mm-hmm. Um, their microbiomes are different. Their dietary choices are different. Their stress exposures might be different. Um, so the impact that that one singular change might have uh, it is just going to vary from person to person. It's kind of like, You know, some people, you know, don't floss their teeth frequently and they might not even brush their teeth uh, that frequently, yet their oral microbiome might not be horribly out of balance because of other factors in their their life. 
maybe they eat a very healthful diet, you know, whereas other people are fastidious about brushing, flossing, uh, but they're drinking Diet Coke all day. You know, I mean, it's mm -hmm. so individualized. So to answer your question, which is an excellent question, um, the first step would be, you know, either come and see me or, or find, um, find a, a holistic or a, some sort of an integrated biological dentist uh, in, in your area. Um, for those who are listening to this who um, are Instagram followers, you can go to my May 27th post of this year where I talk about the different avenues that you can pursue to find uh, dentists who likely share the same sort of mindset that, that I'm sharing today. Um, so start there, start with a mindful dentist who's willing to listen more than they are talk because um, they need to hear your truth. And if they're telling you, um, well, you should do this or you need to do that, I would back off and go find a, another dentist who's asking more questions because the truth often lies in what people are sharing with us about their experience. Uh, and then the second step is, and this has been something that we've brought on board in our practice um, more over the last couple of years, is doing different types of energetic assessments of the teeth that are in question. Um, and, and in this case, we're talking about root canal teeth. So let's say a person had four teeth that had had root canals, and we were concerned about how those teeth are doing in their bodies. Um, obviously, taking the tooth out and sending it out to a lab is, it's very diagnostic, but it, it costs them the tooth, you know? So right. you might want to start with some sort of energetic assessment, um, like uh, mu muscle testing. Uh, and there are a lot of different forms of muscle testing out there. Um, EAV work, which, and there are also different versions of, uh, which is known as electroacupuncture, according to Vol, basically using a, a low voltage circuit where the body and the energetic meridians of the body become the resistor in the circuit. And you can actually measure energetic flow through different organ systems and teeth, which is fascinating. Um, and, and we work with some uh, naturopathic physicians in our area who do those sorts of things for us. Um, and that has been very helpful. Uh, when we're concerned, because let's say a person has, they are unaware of any symptoms, right? They say, hey, I feel great, um, but I read this post, you know, and I've got three root canals mm -hmm. and, and I'm concerned, is it a problem? And, and, you know, we might give them the information that we can based on our dental viewing, three-dimensional x-rays, um, things of that nature. But energetic assessment would also be helpful, um, infrared thermography might be helpful, right? Like using the skin map and how we uh, show heat patterns on our skin can reflect what's happening internally within our body. So we thankfully in Portland, Oregon here, we have a, a great uh, thermographer that we refer to for those sorts of things. So those are great um, non-invasive ways to gather more uh, quantitative information. So I would highly recommend that. And if you find that somewhere in that mix of what you feel in your gut and the information that you're uh, able to gather, that you feel like, you know what, I, I just am going to sleep better at night having these dead teeth out. Well, then that's probably the right decision for you. Um, but there's no, it's not a black and white issue by any means, right? We really want to um, gather good information, but also ask ourselves and our our energetic centers, like, how do I feel about this? Does this feel like it makes sense to me? Right? Yeah. And is it the right choice, the right path forward for Absolutely. you? And so what if someone's listening to this and they've been told they need a root canal? Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah, like, yeah. is this a, like, would you just be like, no, <laughs> like, do you just give a straight no? Or do you say it depends? Well, like, what's your opinion on that? So, uh, and I, that is the one question I get on Instagram and Facebook more than any <laughs> other. And, and I do my very best to answer all those questions myself. And, and, and it's, you know, so for those listening, uh, if a dentist says, you know, let's say you, you present to the dentist and you have these symptoms, usually it's my tooth hurts, right? Um, it's either they have, uh, you know, a cavity my tooth hurts and I have a cavity 
Um, and they say, well, then you need a root canal. And it's interesting because they really uh, infrequently do people receive another option, right? It's just, well, this is what you need. Right. Um, so the way that I respond to that is, well, it is an option, right? That certainly is an option. It's one that you can choose. Um, and the answer of whether it's appropriate for you or not depends on your individualized goals for your health. If your goal is, I want to ensure that I have no pathways or bacteria to get inside my body where it should not, then I would suggest you consider removing the two. Because if you do the root canal, assuredly, it will become infected. Um, however, if your value system is such that you're not ready to remove that tooth, or let's say, you know, God forbid it's a teenager, uh, either due to decay or trauma or what have you, their skeleton isn't completed uh, its growth process yet. And there might be some anatomical uh, advantages to keeping that tooth for the next five years, 10 years. Well, then maybe in that case, the root canal would be appropriate for a period of time, understanding that in the future, it would likely be best for your health to remove it, right? So it's a really a matter of, of assessing a person's goals, their risk factors, um, where they want to be uh, with their own personal health in their future. So it's, it's not a quickie, oh, yep, it hurts. Time for root canal, you know, uh, start <laughs> filling and filling. Um, I, you know, we, we I like the way you... I like the way you talk about this because the, I think it's important to have always the discussion of what are your health values? Yeah. You know, what is important to you? What are your goals? Because everyone's are different and some people have very different feelings about what's appropriate for them and what's not. And I think that that's a really, I will say as, as a person who sees dentists, not, you know, once or twice a year for my sure. regular cleaning, I've, and, and even sees doctors, it's not very often that I've, and, and actually even on this show, it is not very often that any doctors and a lot of practitioners will, will offer this kind of like, you should think about this in terms of your health values. So I really appreciate you actually sharing that because it's really refreshing. And it's, it's an important part of the patient, right? Each of us are patients getting to have a seat at the table and, and be able to discuss what's really important to us for our health and ultimately make that decision so that we can be the drivers, right, or the CEOs of what our health ultimately ends up looking like. So yeah. I just, I think this conversation is so fascinating and eye-opening. And I think people are going to have questions after listening to this. I know <laughs> you and I had discussed before this, there's so much more to talk about. Yeah, and it absolutely. sounds like everyone listening, that Dr. Bloodjet we'll come back and we'll share more about a bunch of different topics involving dental health and whatnot, because I do ask clients now about this in my practice. I started um, a number of months ago and found an alarming rate of people who had had multiple root canals and some even having redos of those root canals and they still were having issues. And so this can be a long process, but I think it's an important conversation that we have. So regardless of what type of issue you have, or if you know somebody in your family even who's had root canals done, this is a great episode for them to listen to, especially if they're struggling with some sort of chronic health issue, even if it's beyond skin. So um, I just want to thank you so much, Dr. Bludgett. This was like amazing. You blew my mind. Thank you. <laughs> totally well, thank blew my mind. Thank you for bringing this to light because it's it, it will be through the awakening and creation of awareness of the public at large that things that are being done to them, which frequently they feel like they have no choice over, they, you know, if we don't create awareness, no change will ever happen. So mm -hmm. I applaud you for, you know, bringing this out. And, uh, you know, I am so grateful to to be a part of uh, sharing it um, with you. So thank you very much for asking me. And I would yeah. abs absolutely love to come back. Yes. And so for anybody who's curious to connect with you, so first of all, you're out in Portland, Oregon, correct? Portland, Oregon, beautiful Portland. So you can go on over to blodgettdentalcare.com. And he's also on Instagram at Blodgett Dental Care. And, you know, we've got Facebook and Twitter 
uh, links as well that we'll share. We'll put everything on the show notes for you guys. So it's really easy for you to connect with Dr. Blodgett and his team, especially if you're looking for more information. He's got a ton and it's very, very informative. It's easy to understand. It's very eye opening. And at least at the least, if you're not able to travel to Portland, you might be able to start asking better questions of your dentist during your routine care visits, as well as if you're starting to have issues. Um, I think this is an important conversation to be had, and I just deeply appreciate you, Dr. Bludgett, for sharing this information with us. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. What a truly incredible interview, right? I am just so blown away and also grateful that Dr. Blodgett joined us to share all of this information. And if you have had root canals, now is the opportunity not to freak out because I could certainly see why one would freak out over this, but is to say, all right, I got to go back and have a conversation with my own dentist. And if that dentist isn't willing to have this conversation with you and isn't willing to hear your feelings and concerns out, then it may be time to find a new dentist that thinks a little differently than the traditional or conventional mode, right? Because we cannot overcome what's going on everywhere else in the body. If you're going through protocol after protocol and you're not getting better and you have these unresolved hidden infections in your mouth, this is gonna make it really challenging for everything else to actually work. So that's how big of a deal this is. It is important. And if you are facing a potential root canal, now is the time to begin thinking about what your other options are. Thankfully, Dr. Blodgett has a ton of information over on his website. I have saved all of the links, everything that we've discussed over in the show notes at skinterrupt.com forward slash 171. There you can check everything out and leave your questions and comments. If you know someone who's dealing with chronic illness and they have had root canals or flip side, you know someone who's considering a root canal, make sure to share this episode with them. This could be incredibly enlightening and a huge game changer for them. And last but not least, before you head out for your day, make sure to head on over to your podcast platform of choice, rate and review the healthy skin show let the world know what you think and what you get out of tuning in every single week and while you're at it make sure to hit the subscribe button that way the next episode lands on your mobile device without you having to do a thing thank you so much for tuning in and i look forward to seeing you in the next episode